Right, I'm going to talk you through some slides which I've used on a number of occasions, um, uh, but which uh, give you some useful background, I think, both to myself and, and uh, what I do um, and what I have done, uh, and also uh, give you some ideas about uh, the field of language teaching and technology. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the slides because it would take a, a very long time. Um, I'm going to uh, sift them through, but you can obviously look at them later online if you want to. So this initial slide gives you a bit of background um, to me uh, and shows uh, my origins. If you look at the little postcard um, on the right hand side in the middle, you'll see me, not me in Mongolia, but uh, you know a, a, a picture postcard of Mongolia where I started my professional career. Now clearly this wasn't a place where there was a lot of uh, high-tech. Uh, it was well before the digital age, well before the internet. Um, and um, But still uh, we used technology in the teaching, or I certainly did. I used uh, cassette players, I used uh, there was a language lab. I used to show films, um, and uh, you know, the, these were the sort of technologies that, that I engaged in. Um, you'll see also some other aspects of my life. Top right-hand corner, you'll see um, areas of work that I've done that are not directly related to English language teaching. Um, work to do with uh, e-learning, e and um, particularly um, the project we ran in China uh, for almost three years and uh, then also working uh, with other colleagues at the university, in this case GPs. I've also, uh, because of my long connections with China, um, I've run conferences there on, on language teaching and, and technology. And uh, you'll see at the bottom of the screen, you'll see um, some more recent um, manifestations of work that I do. Um, um, the, the middle picture at the bottom is me in Second Life. And on the right hand side, uh, there's uh, a QR code link to um, the blog that we keep at Manchester um, that keeps um, people up to date on some of the work that we do and some, some of the issues with language learning and technology. So this talk um, is a combination of a number of things that uh, I've been thinking about uh, in the last few years. Um, and uh, it makes references to um, issues of blending um, um, in terms of the, uh, you know, the the way that we bring technologies to play in, in classrooms, um, the way that we extend our classrooms increasingly using technology. So blending in a sense perhaps is bringing things into the classroom to, to use, blending with the traditional curriculum if you like. Extending is uh, adding uh, to what we already do, um, which is uh, usually an issue uh, for uh, language learning and technology, um, because there's never enough time in uh, the, the you know in the, the class space to do what we need to do, and also this idea of bridging as well, uh, which was um, uh, an idea that you'll, you'll see later talked about in relationship to Stephen Thorne, the idea of um, uh, enabling. Uh, learners to talk about uh, what they do, um, their interests, if you like, in, in the real world, but related, still related to uh, digital uh, technologies. So perhaps the gaming they do um, uh, and the way that, uh, you know, maybe they use languages to actually engage in gaming uh, in, in their free time. Uh, the title is In the Digital Age because we are very much uh, within a digital age. And this next slide um, Gives you definitely gives you that sense of um, where we are in terms of uh, um, the type of learners that we find in, in our classrooms. Now, some of you will probably be um, getting on for being digital natives, although perhaps not quite, um, uh, not in the official terms. But um, th this is a term that's become increasingly popular, and you see this discussed a lot. And there's you know that relationship all the time between the teacher the teacher and what they do and what they're capable of doing and what their understanding of the modern world is um, and what younger people uh, want to do. And of course, this has become more starkly, um, a more stark sort of distinction over time, um, particularly when it comes to using uh, tools like mobile phones, um, which, uh, you know, which are 
uh, the people we encounter in the classrooms, of course, use on a regular basis, um, and uh, and perhaps uh, our technology is, is not quite of the same sophistication as theirs. So there's that gap, um, and there's that sense of unease um, in teachers about using technologies because they, they feel that gap. They feel, well, we don't know as much about it as the learners, so we end up looking a bit stupid if we're not careful because, you know, the stuff doesn't work properly and they know better and, you know, we lose control of the classroom. So, you know, you, you find that a lot in the literature, that, that sense that, that teachers feel um, to some extent, to some extent disempowered. Um, and uh, this is something, you know, we try and counter on courses like the ones we run at Manchester. So I've mentioned this, this idea of the digital turn. Uh, um, and this digital term basically, you know, means that in a sense we're at a stage where we're doing things differently with technology. So if you look at all of these different uh, items that, that are on this screen, you see Wikipedia, a uh, different way of storing knowledge, a different way of maintaining knowledge, different people uh, actually contributing that knowledge as well. So it's very interactive, um, a range of uh, people, you know, set up a page, um, you know, there's dispute about it, discussion, etc, etc. And, you know, you find in the middle picture on, on the top, you, you see, um, you can't probably necessarily recognise me, but there I am in Second Life um, in, in, a, in the middle of a language lesson. Um, next to it is a mobile phone. Underneath it on the left we see um, uh, a dad um, uh, reading a book um, or, or, or getting the, the child to read the book to him, but using a tablet uh, rather than a traditional book um, for, to actually uh, work on the story. And maybe the story is, is quite interactive. Maybe it has a number of multimedia elements to it, sound and, 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 uh, and that kind of thing. And all those, those things were, uh, you know, to some extent possible in, in traditional books. Uh, they weren't as common as they are now. Um, and then the final picture on the bottom right hand side, we see two uh, children um, working in a school, um, uh, working again with a tablet, um, uh, working together, doing pair work, discussing something. Um, but also you'll see some other bits of technology around them. So um, there's a pencil or a pen and, and a pad there. So, you know, that mixture of technologies is there. So what we have here um, is um, the uh, that notion that, that that digital turn involves these technologies, um, um, but uh, what's underlying that are still uh, the, the pedagogic processes that, that we're interested in, the dialogues um, that we're having, and, and these are what are, are most important. We've seen apps change um, over time. In fact, the fact we call them apps now rather than software is, is intriguing. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, a mobile phone is a form of computer, um, and so is a tablet, uh, and so is a laptop, um, and and apps are basically software. They're different, they're often much smaller, um, uh, very much more targeted in, in what they do, but fundamentally um, they're bits of software, uh, but created for a different space, for a smaller screen, or, or whatever it happens to be. And we see these, um, th these sort of developments, um, you know, things very quickly changing um, uh, to, to where we're able to do quite significant things uh, with these technologies. Um, so, you know, web pages are not really that old um, uh, and uh, we then have developments like wikis and blogs, uh, which bring in that more interactive element, the, the web two, the social media side of, of things that, that we talk about so much today. We see word processors develop and they started off being very much off, offline. Uh, they are increasingly used online now um, with, uh, with tools like uh, Google um, Drive and, and the Docs and Presentation. And we see those again on mobile phones with tools like Evernote, you know, Evernote available across all of those different, different, uh, different tools. So you can have it on your desktop, you can run it offline if you pay for it, and you can, you know, use it on your mobile as well. Uh, you've got different kinds of digital recording, um, you know, you can do do it online. You can do it on a mobile phone. You've got things like desktop video conferencing. Skype is, uh, you know, a, a good example of that. Um, but you've also got other other tools. Some some commercial like Adobe Connect. Um, some others like Big Blue Button and Hangout, um, uh, open source or available uh, with advertising added in. You've got the same developments with PowerPoint. Um, 
And then you've got uh, uh, tools like virtual worlds and, and gaming. Um, you know, these uh, started off in text-based environments and they're now in spaces like Second Life. Or, you know, if you're talking about uh, games, uh, you know, you have a whole range of games, um, digital games that are available on a whole um, you know, a whole group of different devices, uh, some specialised devices, sometimes online, sometimes on tablets. So all of these things have been around for a long time, um, but the way that we use them, the way that we can interact with them, the way that we can interact with other people via the sort of social media elements that are built into, into all of these kind of tools um, has changed um, what's possible um, and where uh, we, we can do those kinds of things, uh, do the kinds of activities that, that we want to be able to do uh, in our teaching. Um, I won't dwell on the hardware um, side of it. Uh, we all seen a lot of this hardware. Uh, interesting in, in the bottom right hand corner to see um, the interactive whiteboard, um, which uh, a much vaunted uh, piece of uh, technology um, that we see in some classrooms, but perhaps uh, it is now with the you know the the, the advent of the tablet uh, very rapidly invading classrooms across the world. Perhaps um, you know not something that we'll see hanging around for very much longer. But interestingly, perhaps I mean not a piece of software you know piece of hardware designed specifically for language teaching, but you know in a sense you know for teaching or certainly for business environments uh, something that. Um, you know, was specifically you know made in that kind of way. Most of the other bits of technology are very generic, and and, and we've always kind of advocated that in language teaching. Um, we do find uh, you know that there are two sides to uh, uh, the coin in in terms of of, of discussion, um, and we see um, we see that uh, you know the, these different books that have nothing to do with language teaching represent. Uh, very diverse views of, of the way that uh, we, we might interpret the digital world. So, uh, you know, the top two, the shallows and alone together are, are you know, raising very uh, important questions about the way uh, we want uh, society to be and, and, and what te role technology might play. I mean, the shallows um, makes the argument that, that basically we don't engage in any depth, really, uh, in the Internet. It, it encourages um, browsing, um, you know, the, the, the metaphors that that, 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 it, that it has, um, you know, in, in, you know, that we use to, to describe um, um, the, what we do uh, when we use the web, you know, are, are, are in a sense, you know, in a sense, give it away in a way. Um, and Alone Together is, uh, you know, a very interesting book uh, about, um, you know, how much we you know, we use technology now to support our social lives um, rather than uh, maybe sort of engaging so much with real people. Again, you know, these are these are you know um, discussions, and maybe you know there, there there are other sides to this this debate. But you know, this is certainly worth thinking about. And then underneath it, you know, we've got. Um, you know, we've got the kind of gung ho type books that say, you know, here we are, we've we've arrived. You know, the technology's here. It's great. Let's get on with it. I mean, the slide that I sort of skipped past uh, there quite quickly um, it is an interesting little thing uh, that, that that I saw on the news a, a few years ago now, uh, and shows the extent to which you know te technology has developed. You know, the ability now to go to the top of Everest um, with a, a mobile phone and actually do a telephone call. So, you know, we're in a world where you know, technology really dominates. There are serious sort of social questions uh, that we need to ask about it. But at the same time, we have people really pushing these ideas. And in, in most educational contexts, we find technology, um, you know, arriving uh, at a great pace. We see national policies um, on e-learning, for example. So this represents uh, the UK government's uh, strategy uh, for e-learning, particularly in higher education, um, and uh, you know that they, they say the right things. The rhetoric's there. Um, you know, uh, in embedding this strategy, we want to ensure that there is confident use of the full range of pedagogic opportunities. So you're stressing that notion of pedagogy. Um, you know, ICT uh, as a communications and delivery tool, not you know, not something that uh, you know that, that is just used um, you know in in a in in a, in a non thought through way, um, and you know, 
this notion in, in the bottom quote about transforming higher education, that idea, you see a lot of that, you know, the idea that technology is there and it's going to somehow transform what we do. It's going to change the nature of education in a radical way because, you know, education is wrong. It's broken. It needs fixing in some kind of way. And these, you know, this, this kind of rhetoric is, is, is very common um, in, in uh, you know, all over the world. And we see... Uh, we see um, projects uh, where uh, governments think technology is broken, or not sort of, te sorry, education is broken, and they think they're going to find, you know, a magical technology, a magical bullet, uh, an e-tab, um, it's kind of, you know, aptly named in a way, you know, a tablet, you know, a, a pill uh, that's going to, you know, going to solve all our problems. So we, we take, give these children these tablets, um, and they swallow them, and uh, before we know it, you know, all of our public education problems are solved. We all know that doesn't work. So where do teachers fit into all this? Um, well, one of the areas of work that I certainly have been uh, interested in, in, in for a number of years is, is the socio-cultural area. Um, and this gives, you know, gets us thinking in a more broad way about uh, about the issues and constraints and possibilities as well that, that, that exist within a particular context. So you see a little quotation there uh, from Johnson. A sociocultural perspective defines human learning as a dynamic social process that is situated in physical and social context and distributed across persons, tools and activities. Um, so this idea that uh, human learning is not just about you know what goes on cognitively it's not just about the brain um, and it's you know it's uh, you know, absorption of knowledge it's about the engagement with uh, people uh, with with different tools in our case digital tools um, and the fact that those digital tools do things in a different kind of way to the way that a book did them you know so we can do other things with open up opportunities um, and you know the more innovative and creative that we are with these tools that hopefully the better uh, will be in, in terms of you know what we're trying to do in, in education so I think it's very important to look at it in the round and to you know consider the institutions that we're involved in uh, the other people in the environment so you know people like the parents for example particularly in a school context very important in terms of supporting uh, what what teachers do and, and can also act as a constraint uh, against what teachers do because they don't want their what they see as their children you know wasting time with these technologies when they should be doing kind of real work um, uh, you often see that kind of cited in, in the literature so this is uh, you know one representation that, that we see uh, in literature about uh, you know the socio-cultural world uh, this is uh, this comes originally from from Engerstrom but you know the, 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 the link is back to to Vygotsky as I'm sure uh, you, you know you will have heard of Vygotsky uh, and the role that he you know he played in getting people to think more about the social realm when when it comes to education but you know we have all of these kind of elements here you know you have tools you have the teacher making decisions about uh, what they want to do in the classroom these are influenced by you know what's going on in the institution it might be influenced by the wider communities a teacher goes along to a conference like an IATEFL conference sees something that they find interesting and takes it back and thinks oh or is you know sort of thinks oh well you know there are all these other teachers doing these things perhaps I should be doing that too in in my context um, and of course uh, we see um, you know we see uh, our uh, you know, uh, the drivers as a teacher, we want our learners to develop skills that are transferable um, into to the environment. Um, so that's the left-hand side of this diagram. On the right-hand side, we see the learners, um, you know, and, and although, you know, we may use tools in the classroom, the tools in use for them may be very different um, in terms of what they do in, in their, in, you know, in their world outside of schooling, what they do and how they, uh, they interact is very different. They might so see the tools uh, that, that are used in an educational context as, as very different. And, and their motivations might be very different as well. Um, they might just see language learning, it's part of the curriculum, I have to get this exam, I've got to get a job, you know, ultimately. So, you know, 
Now getting this uh, qualification is what I need, never mind whether I can actually use the language or not. So, you know, we have these conflicting uh, contexts, uh, these uh, activity systems as, as they're described in the literature. So the learner's activity system, the tools that they have, you know, the influences that are going on around them through their family and friends, etc. The fact that they recognise that they need, you know, a language qualification. They think teachers should teach. You know, that's their job. So I go to school, teachers teach me how to do things. You know, none of this business of, you know, actually having to, to work and in, engage with these things. Teachers see it from a different perspective. And so you have the, you know, the, you know, the, the contradictions as, as they're described in the literature between those two activity systems and, and trying to negotiate the relationship between them. So hopefully, you know, if you get that right, then ultimately, uh, you know, you see language learning develop from this. So this broader, more encompassing uh, idea of uh, uh, you know, what role technology might play uh, in, in the whole kind of activity of education is an important one because it has a massive influence on, on whether uh, we can actually do what we believe, you know, we want to do the, you know, whether we can put the decisions we, we want to make into practice with our learners, whether our learners will actually engage with with, with what we want them to do and whether ultimately language learning is successful, which is what we want to achieve. So one of the elements um, that is important and we see um, you know, uh, a lot of discussion of this in, in the literature is uh, this notion of pedagogical content knowledge. Um, and uh, we also see um, uh, an extension of this, we see technological pedagogical content knowledge as well, um, which is an extension of it. And, and this is where the teacher comes in. So a teacher you know, starts with their understanding of a subject area. Um, uh, so for example, in, in our case, uh, English language, uh, we come with a background, or some of us come with a background of, of English language, some of us don't. Some of us come with other backgrounds. We usually do some kind of training course that gives us sort of general ideas about, you know, how pedagogy works, how to manage a classroom, you know, in the old, old days, how to write on a blackboard, you know, or, or, or how to use a projector or whatever it is these days. And over time, we develop this, this pedagogical content knowledge. So we develop a sense of what works uh, in terms of mixing together um, the, uh, the content of language teaching with our general pedagogical knowledge and how that specifically works in terms of, of language teaching. Um, and you know, this, this notion of uh, you know, this is something that's you know, missed out so often in, in training courses is, is what Shulman uh, was talking about. And of course, uh, this is what you know, a course unit like language learning and technology is about. It very much looks at it, it assumes a background of, of knowledge in terms of, of teaching um, and an understanding of learning on the part of the teacher. Um, and you know, it assumes a level of practice as well, an ability, abilities and practice abilities in terms of the teacher. But it adds to that the, the, the knowledge that, that is related to, um, to technology and it gets you thinking about and considering that. So let me very briefly talk about uh, a project uh, that uh, myself and Diane and, and Zeynep uh, were involved in a, a few years ago now. Um, and uh, we spent quite a long time, two years, um, uh, you know, uh, doing a survey of quite a lot of teachers, 370 teachers. Um, and we also did some learner surveys as well. And then we did, you know, 17 case studies. Um, and uh, these, these are available online. Um, uh, the link uh, to, to these case studies is, is, is on the wiki. Um, and uh, we spent a lot of time exploring, uh, you know, why teachers do what they do, you know, and, and what, is, what is the current situation. And, um, and uh, we, uh, you know, we found uh, that quite a lot of uh, issues uh, came out. Um, and one of the things that was important was this idea of teacher decision making. Um, teachers, you know, have certain beliefs uh, uh, about um, technology and learning. They have, you know, they have their beliefs about language learning. They, 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 you know, they think they know what's best. You know, they've done their courses or they've thought about it. They've had their experiences as language learners. There's the um, the, the, the actual uh, environment uh, itself uh, that we talked about, the institutional setting, 
and also increasingly the expectations of both the learners, you know, in terms of what they, they, they should get, and the institution as well. So teacher decision making about what technologies they should use and how that they should use that are influenced by, by all of these things about, you know, the relationship between technology and language learning, beliefs about, you know, the best ways that, that languages learn, what's possible within an institutional setting. Not every uh, setting is quite like this one, you know, with um, with, with technology available on tap. Um, but also, you know, particularly, I think, in terms of the digital learner, uh, the, the digital native that, that, that we all talk about, you know, there's an expectation that, that we use these, these tools in, in, in certain kinds of ways, that, you know, they recognise that these tools can, can potentially be helpful, or maybe they don't, and we as teachers can mediate that, and we make decisions about what we do in a classroom. Another thing we found out was, you know, classrooms are changing um, in terms of what they do. We still see these kind of very, you know, typical... Uh, probably what are these days increasingly language labs or multimedia labs, uh, you know, with, uh, you, know, you know, mass numbers of, of students going into them. But also increasingly uh, classrooms are, 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 are other ways uh, organised as well. I mean, on the right hand side, we see that we see perhaps more traditional classrooms where, you know, there's a projector, maybe a smart board. Um, and uh, you know, uh, but but not much else really. And a lot of the activity is the extension outside. And then on the left hand side, we see much smaller kind of you know group work, problem based learning, inquiry based learning, those kinds of activities. Particularly you know in, in for example the business sector, uh, which was an area that we looked at um, as part of the the project. Um, extended classrooms uh, often involve some kind of virtual learning environment um, which it might include a wiki uh, or a blog uh, and, and at the time we were doing this survey Ning's were also very popular although that you know they still exist Ning uh, as a sort of social uh, you know self self created so social network you know uh, they're, they're, they're not so popular now because you know you have to pay for them but you see uh, it, you know VLEs have become almost sort of standard both open source ones like Moodle uh, but also institutionally managed ones as well. And, uh, you know, you see people making use of their own tools. Uh, another tool that you see used a lot now, particularly in secondary education, is a tool called Edmodo, um, which some of you may have come across, some of you may be using. So in terms of, uh, you know, what a teacher would do, um, you know, teachers, uh, you know, are faced with these technology drivers that we talked about, you know, pushing, prodding at them uh, to actually get engaged. Um, we've got issues like, you know, people talk about blended learning, blended learning being, you know, the, the answer to, to many, many contexts, as people have argued. We've got, you know, the notion that learning is distributed. It's across all of these different spaces now. Flexibility of access, you know, um, got lots of access to, to language. Uh, and increasingly access to the, the real world. So you've got those technology drivers creating opportunity. And at the same time, we have, uh, you know, the, the needs uh, of our learners as well in terms of, um, you know, helping the learners to be digitally literate. So yes, they do come uh, to classroom with their technologies, but do they really know how to use them? Creating intercultural awareness through those technologies hopefully um, you know by the end of their schooling they they are more capable of working independently they you know they have a sense of what their needs are and and, and and how they you know how they should develop them because you know we worked on things like strategy development for example so this kind of you know these kinds of areas are, are, are the sorts of things that the teachers are are working on and focusing on whole range of technologies in use still you know um, you know, we when we did the, the survey and was almost sort of four years ago or yeah I mean it's more than four years ago now um, uh, you know there were still uh, people you know using audio cassettes and I'm sure there are still people using audio cassettes um, and analog video uh, but you know increasingly you see tools like Skype um, there's not much mention there of, uh, of mobile technologies but of course you know that that is now you know uh, in in 2014 um, increasingly that's you know the sort Sort of uh, technology that's being talking about so it's always has been and always will will be a, a very wide range so you can actually catch up with that uh, you know the database that we created of, of case studies 
uh, through this link here, and I, I, the link is also on the uh, on the wiki as well. So I'm just going to quickly show you a couple of the um, the, the case studies, um, uh, you know, in brief to give you a sense of the sort of things that that that, that teachers you know do uh, within that socio-cultural kind of context. You know, take into account the constraints. I mean, this is uh, one actually of our former students, Jin He, um, and she teaches in, in a university in uh, the, the the north. Uh, east of China, um, and you know, at the time of the case study, um, she didn't have you know particularly good access to, um, say, for example, the internet in a classroom. But she was keen uh, to bring in materials um, uh, in for the students to to you know to enliven um, you know the, the the regular textbook. So she's working with a a regular textbook. Um, of readings, um, and this particular chapter was about C.S. Lewis. Um, so she used, she made use of material from the web, um, so videos that she she downloaded and, and put onto a pen drive, um, uh, uh, access materials from uh, the internet, like like uh, you know like Wikipedia, um, but also um, you know using kind of more commercial. Uh, video materials as well, um, and she would use uh, a PowerPoint to bring all that together, uh, put that onto her pen drive, and take it into the class uh, for, for use, um, and to get the, the you know the students to to engage with the material. And what she would also do would be to uh, ultimately she would demonstrate to them um, how this. Um, you know, she would she would use this as a model, and then she get the students to do to. To do things themselves, so she would set them the task of going away, uh, picking one of the uh, readings, and then uh, creating the presentations in groups around that. So you know, the, the the slides give you some of the background um, and uh, you know, some of her uh, her reasoning for doing it. You can look at these slides in a bit more detail later, uh, or you can read the, uh, the the actual case study on the website, um, and. Um, a couple of things that, that 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 came out, which were really interesting from these multimedia compositions, as as Jin He called them, um, she says the, the students' presentation material is wonderful. For example, this group imitated some of the movie scenes and prompted their fellow students to think about love. They made their costumes and used a digital cam to record the scene. They used the edited video clip by adding music and voice. So you know, very creative um, use of uh, you know additional technologies there. Um, uh, you know, very engaging um, from, from from the way that it's described. But at, on the other side of the coin, um, while she's sort of uh, surprised by the quality of the material, she says there at the bottom, there are also shocking grammatical mistakes in their materials, which catch my attention. If they simply deliver the information verbally, I'm not sure whether I have the chance to correct them in a timely way. So at the same time as doing something that actually uh, gets them engaged with, with what they're doing in, in the language, it also gives them the opportunity to focus on form. So uh, you know she can come back to this material and say, OK, that was beautiful, that was wonderful what you did, but let's have a look at some of the language at the same time and see if we can you know, explore it. So it gives that, that opportunity to, to actually do things in that kind of way. Now I'm now going to uh, flip across a whole series of slides uh, which you can come back to and have a look at and as I say you can see and read these case studies on the website. Um, so this is uh, uh, Aaron um, uh, who works um, uh, or worked, I'm not sure whether he still works in, in South America in, in Colombia um, and again very different uh, uh, world. Vida, um, who works in uh, Slovenia um, and uh, works in an ESP context. Um, and then uh, we, have, um, um, we have here uh, an example uh, that actually comes from um, uh, my book. This is Ayat al-Tawal, um, uh, and this shows uh, the way that um, you know, classrooms can be linked um, uh, across context, so uh, this is an interesting one. But you can you can read about that in, in more detail. Um, and I then got a link to uh, Stephen Thorne uh, talking about the work that he does. And this is where 
he brings in this idea of bridging. Um, uh, so uh, you know, it, so far we've seen um, we've seen Jin He uh, extending her classroom. The other colleagues also extending, um, and uh, you know, in a sense, I at um, uh, by um, um, uh, you know she, she's. Um, you know, using a different kind of extension in the sense of bringing somebody in from outside to 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 actually engage in a classroom. Stephen talks about bridging in in the way that um, he uh, works with particular game software um, and has a particular interest in 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 the diaspora communities um, uh, that the, the, the learning language and talks about the complexity of of the language world that that, that people inhabit. Um, but he's uh, particularly interested in uh, the bottom there. You can see the the, the reference to Thorne and Reinhardt to bridging. Uh, so the learners who are perhaps you know, using uh, these technologies in their in their in their real lives um, and and possibly engaging using language uh, particularly uh, to communicate in these online gaming worlds. Uh, and then bringing those ideas and those notions in, into the classroom. So, um, I mean, Thorne is particularly interested in in people, you know, who who live and uh, come to live in the states, um, who need to access, you know, or who are accessing, you know, the English language, but also, you know, trying to keep in contact with their family back at home, and using different kinds of media to do that. Um, and he talks about the way that those students, you know, work in these, you know, multilingual environments, in, in gaming environments, but also do things like uh, create what's called fan fiction. Um, you know, so actually producing, you know, English language, quite level, high level English language on, on forums. Um, and, you know, the motivation um, to, to, to use uh, English language is there because, you know, they want to be able to do that. So you know, very interesting um, notion of, of, of de development of language there. And also, you know, the, this issue, um, this term languaging, uh, which again I talk about, you know, in, in some detail in, in the final chapter of, of the book that I edited, um, that, that you can find links links to off, off the website. Um, you know, that the whole business of trying to get people to engage to output language rather than just, you know, passively kind of, you know, be presented with language. Um, so this is an, an important element and we'll be looking at a lot of this as the, the, the course unit develops. So, yeah, there's a link to, to work that I'm doing in, in, in Second Life and there's a nice video here that we'll come back to uh, about, about mobile learning. Um, which, is, you know, as I've obviously implied, is increasingly uh, becoming an important part of, of what we find um, in, in you know, the world of technology. So we see these massive changes going on um, um, and also the changing role that technology has um, in, in the classroom. Uh, you know, we see, you know, as these summaries say, digital technologies allow more flexibility, um, uh, you know, it allows a space within a classroom to do things that, you know, are really important in a classroom, like, you know, practicing spoken language rather than, say, doing reading, for example. Uh, teachers can put learners first, um, you know, uh, allowing them to use tools, put the technology in, in their hands. So, you know, with the example we saw of Jin He, you know, giving them the opportunity to use technology to, to say things for themselves, uh, you know, about about their, their lives. And the same with the bridging activities of, of Stephen Thorne. You know, you're bringing into the classroom uh, from technology or even via technology, you know, something that, that they're excited, um, uh, you know, to, uh, to talk about, you know, within, within the classroom. Technology allows uh, teachers to see uh, errors, um, you know, in the sense of uh, because material is recorded, you know, you can go back over it and, 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 and review it. Um, so you can focus on form um, and the development of the higher order skills, higher order skills that, that Vygotsky uh, uh, talks about. So, you know, all the time pushing language, as Swain would argue, you know, if we want to get people beyond just being, you know, fluent, but fluent and accurate, we need to push them a bit harder. And develop those higher order skills. Um, so you know, being able to review language in that kind of way allows us to do it and also change it, you know, with, with tools like wikis or whatever. 
Um, tools, uh, you know, technologies allow learners to become more autonomous and develop, you know, lifelong skills, skills beyond the classroom, uh, you know, literacy skills of, of various types, digital literacy skills. Um, there's a very broad range of authentic materials with, uh, often with ready-made support. Um, you know, masses and masses of input and reference material, and also communities that are out there, you know, working and helping to support learners as well. And as I've said, you know, learners can bring their, you know, personally relevant digital materials into class, um, you know, and uh, and they can use that as a way of, you know, comparing, uh, you know, the language that, that they're producing externally to the language of the classroom and get a sense of, you know, what, what language is about. So, you know, this course unit is going to look, as I'm sure you will have worked out by now, at a very broad range of uh, both technologies, um, but very much embedded in, into uh, the world of language teaching and not forgetting um, the, the skills um, uh, that, that uh, teachers require along the way to enable them to be able to you know, put into play uh, the things that they want to do. So I hope you enjoy uh, the course unit and uh, I will make the slides available uh, within the wiki.